Hello everybody, and today we're taking a look at a bit of a deceiving computer. Now, how did it trick me, you ask? Well, simply put, it was far shittier than I ever could have possibly imagined. Now, it can play games with legitimate levels of success, but before we get into that, I'd like to tell you a bit about the background of this laptop. This computer, along with 90% of the other computers you've seen on this channel, was sourced from an electronics recycling location, also known as a tech dumpster. When I first saw it, it looked pretty solid and not terribly old, so I took it home and ran a few tests to see if I can get away with some lightweight gaming on it. Spoiler alert, I was, but along the way I ran into many issues. If you're just here to see the benchmarks, you can skip to the timestamp currently displayed on the screen, but for now, let's take a look at the specs of this computer. The laptop in question today is the Toshiba Satellite L505D S5965. It was released back in 2009 for $450 and would have served as your average daily driver laptop. Originally, this computer came with an AMD Athlon 64X2, 3GB of DDR2 clocked to 800MHz, a 250GB 5400RPM hard drive, a Radeon Mobility 3100 graphics chip, and had a screen size of 15.6 inches with a resolution of 1366 by 768 However, the computer I tested today had a few parts swapped out and ran a 465GB 5400RPM hard drive along with the AMD Turion X2 Ultra ZM84. So, if my research is correct, which it should be, it would mean that the last owner swapped out the CPU of this laptop with another one which I'm pretty sure you can do on this model. But aside from a few forum posts and an Arabic listing of two American import laptops at very special prices, it seems that any Toshiba L505D computer would only have a Turion X2 Ultra ZM84 if it was installed as an aftermarket upgrade. But now that we got that out of the way, I'd like to quickly highlight a few of the laptop's, uh, quirks. First, it only has two USB ports, which I can honestly say is the smallest amount I've ever seen on any computer before. Secondly, while clearing up some space on the hard drive, I meant to right click the recycling bin to empty it, but I accidentally left clicked it and let's just say there was a bit of, uh, a adult content that had been unsuccessfully removed. Speaking of which, there were some crusty bits of something on the keyboard when I first got it, and I can only pray that it isn't related to what I found in the recycling folder. Moving on, um, one of the screws on the bottom of the computer was very clearly not stock and was also very clearly not intended for usage in such a small screw hole. Speaking of things not working right, we move on to my favorite part, the terrible battery of this laptop. So the laptop will only work if it's plugged in, which I learned when I got into Windows and it said plugged in, not charging, 0%, and if you remove the charging cable it would immediately turn off. So clearly the battery had some issues. Initially I was looking to sell this computer and wanted to take a look at the battery to see which model I would need for a replacement part. However, one of the bits of plastic that secures the battery in place was very broken and I was unable to remove the battery from the system. I probably eventually could with enough prying and mutilation, but this computer is such a piece of crap that it's just not worth my time. Speaking of which, it also has a portion of the plastic missing from the lower back of the screen which allows you to see inside the laptop. For reference, at this point we're about halfway through all the issues surrounding this computer. When you hit the Windows button in the bottom left of the screen to go type something in, it just doesn't work, nothing comes up, and I've never had this issue before. Additionally, when you go to the control panel to uninstall a program, it just doesn't let you and throws up some Windows error that I don't care enough to look into. Also, when you go into Google Chrome to try to download some files, sometimes it just doesn't allow you to, and it's seemingly at random. It could be doing this, however, since every time you click on a website link, it has some certificate issue and makes browsing the web a general pain. I mean, you can still access most websites, but sometimes they'll load incorrectly or they just flat out will not let you in, like for YouTube. My least favorite part of this computer, though, is that MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner statistics server refuse to work under any circumstances on this computer. Once again, I've never had this issue before, but due to it, I was only able to run fraps to get the frame rate of the benchmarks. And last but not least, I'm not trying to sound nitpicky here, but the CD drive sticks out a few millimeters from the chassis and it's just... Why? There's more issues, but at this point it's just due to aesthetic wear and it doesn't impact the overall functionality of the computer. However, there is a pro to this laptop. One singular nice thing I could think to say about it. The screen doesn't look terrible. It's decent, I mean, if you have very low standards, but hey, I got it out of the freaking trash, so what more could I ask for? So, long story short, the laptop is crap, the OS is probably messed up, and there's a good chance that, uh, someone defiled the computer. So, let's plug in our external mice and keyboards and head right into some gaming benchmarks. Due to the condition of this computer, I set the bar low and first tried to run some Far Cry on this system. The resolution I used for the test was the same as the native resolution of this laptop, which is 1280x768p. For the settings of this test, I used the auto detect feature and it set everything to high. Initially, the game was running well while indoors and the frame rate was in the lower 30s, but outside the frame rate was only in the upper teens. However, with lower settings, a better frame rate could be easily achieved. Due to Far Cry's success, I then tried to run its successor, Far Cry 2. Since it is a more demanding title, I ran all the lowest settings and at first tried to play the game in 768p. However, the frame rate only managed to remain in the single digits and I was forced to lower the resolution down to 480x720. However, after I lowered it, the average frame rate was in the lower 20s and could be playable after a bit of getting used to. 
So, since Far Cry 2 was able to perform so well, I then started up some Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. On paper, this computer should have been able to easily run this game, but in practice, it was completely unable to. With all the lowest settings and a resolution of 1280 by 768 the game was completely unplayable and had a frame rate in the single digits. At first, I thought that the computer might have been throttling due to thermals, but a quick check showed that the temperatures were by no means atypical. Changing the resolution did not have any noticeable effect on the frame rate, and overall, I have no idea why this game ran so terribly. I then played a new game on this channel, Call of Duty 2. This game was released all the way back in 2005, four years before the debut of this laptop, but I still ran it with all the lowest settings and a resolution of 1280 by 720 In this opening training level, the frame rate was in the lower 20s and the upper teens and made for a decent gaming experience on this laptop. I then attempted to run another new game on this channel by the name of Star Wars Battlefront. Unlike COD 2, this game was released back in 2004, but similarly to COD 2, I ran this game with all the lowest settings and a resolution of 1280 by 720 but for some reason, it wouldn't let me change some of the settings such as VSync, so unfortunately, that was toggled on during gameplay. By the end of the test, the frame rate was consistently in the single digits and once again, completely unplayable. The last successful gaming test I was able to get running on this computer was with Half-Life 2. I ran this game with the resolution of 1280 by 768 with all the lowest settings applied. For the most part, the frame rate was in the mid 40s and the upper 30s, but when an alien did some weird green thing, it plummeted the frame rate down to the single digits. But in sum, the game ran pretty well and thus concludes a section of successful gaming benchmarks on this computer. Now for the less than favorable, unsuccessful gaming benchmarks of this laptop. I've never had an issue with any of these games before, so the problems definitely were due to something within this laptop. The first failed gaming benchmark was of Need for Speed Underground. The game booted up just fine and was able to get into the loading screen where it just loaded, indefinitely. I know that this game works on both 32 and 64 bit operating systems, so I guess it just decided that it did not want to run on this computer for whatever reason. Next up was Terraria, which just immediately crashed. As soon as you clicked on the executable file to launch the game, it would just say Terraria had stopped working and the game wouldn't run no matter what. This was probably due to a 32 versus 64 bit incompatibility though, since later it ran perfectly fine on a computer with the 64 bit operating system installed. The following failed test was of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I was able to enter the menus and toggle the settings to an appropriate mixture and I set the resolution to 640 by 480. But unfortunately, I was not able to reach actual gameplay since the program was unable to locate the appropriate executable. Finally, for the last test, I tried to run 60 seconds. This one, however, I know for a fact did not work since the program requires a 64-bit operating system and the one installed on this computer was only 32-bit. It was obvious to me why this game wouldn't run, but I chose to include the test because it demonstrates how cumbersome and annoying 32-bit operating systems can be. So that's what makes this computer the deceitful, terrible, busted POS it truly is. In regards to its future, I was originally going to try to sell it, but honestly, it's not worth anything. Its specs are terrible and the usage is somehow worse. Due to this, I'll probably dismantle and dismember the computer to use for parts or I'll find some weird project that I can use it in. I'll probably throw in a 64-bit Windows 7 ISO and might mess with the computer's internals a bit since it's just so, so cruddy and I have zero regards for its life. A clean install of Windows will probably fix a multitude of the software issues, but the problem of a broken, non-removable battery is very large and I'll probably just part out and ultimately throw out the system. This computer probably was a decent choice a decade ago, but in 2020, it's trash. After I reinstall Windows, I'll be sure to let you know how it turns out. But hey, did you know that I uploaded two unlisted videos to this channel within the last two weeks? Probably not, because they have basically no views, but you can find these videos in the Discord exclusive channel in the official Jandek Discord server, link in description. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because the interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and I guarantee that I will respond to your comments. While you're at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye!